The wives of French monarchs follow a pattern of either being overshadowed by their husbands' mistresses or for being just as famous as their husbands. These women provided their husbands with heirs, had an important presence at the French court, and tried their best to deal with the cards they were dealt with in life. One such woman, loved by her adoptive people during her lifetime but later overshadowed by others after her death, went from a deposed princess to a graceful queen. This is the story of Queen Maria Lizinska. Born on June 23, 1703 as Maria Carolina Zofia Felicia Lizinska in Lower Silesia, Maria was the second daughter of King Stanislaw Lizinski I of Poland and his wife, Countess Karolina Oplaninska. Maria's elder sister, Mariana Lizinska, was born on May 25, 1699, but died at the age of just 18 on June 20, 1717, three days before Maria's 14th birthday due to pneumonia. Maria's father, Stanislaw, was so upset by the passing of his eldest daughter that he asked Maria not to speak her name in his presence. One year after the birth of Maria, her father became the King of Poland by King Charles XII of Sweden. Stanislaw's reign as king would not last very long and he was deposed as the Polish king in 1709 when the Swedish army lost military control in Poland. The former Polish royal family was given refuge by King Charles XII of Sweden, but Maria became lost. She was supposedly found with her nursemaid in a stable. When the family entered Sweden, they were greeted by Dowager Queen Hedwig Eleonora, the grandmother of the Swedish king. The family was not wealthy, and therefore had to live in a small house in 1718. Maria's mother, Karolina, and paternal grandmother, Anna Lazinska, were unhappy with the loss of their royal position and blamed Stanislaw for their political misfortune. Growing up, Maria was close with her father and would spend time with him regularly, conversing with each other about various subjects. Despite her father no longer being King of Poland, Maria was still given the education of a princess. She was gifted in dancing, languages, singing, and she was also able to play numerous musical instruments. As Maria became older and neared her adult years, the question arose as to who she would marry. Maria was not described as a great beauty, but as a young woman who was well-educated, graceful, and a pleasant person. In 1720, she was suggested as a possible bride to Louis Henri, Duke of Bourbon, a grandson of Louis XIV of France through his illegitimate daughter with Madame de Montespan. His mother, Louise Francois, refused to give her permission towards the marriage. A second marriage was proposed in 1724 to Louis, Duke of Orléans, a grandson of Louis XIV through another illegitimate daughter with Madame de Montespan. His mother, Francois Marie, also refused to give her permission towards the marriage. Maria was later placed on a list alongside 99 other princesses as marriage candidates to the young King Louis XV of France. Maria was not the first choice of bride, and she was only placed on the list as she was a Catholic and therefore fulfilled the minimum requirements. 
As the list got shorter, Maria was removed due to being too poor. Maria was later chosen again to be a marriage candidate due to political complications with the final four girls, and Maria did not carry any troubling political connections. Madame Dupree, mistress to Louis Henri, had a portrait painted of Maria and had it sent to Louis XV. Madame Dupree ensured the portrait looked similar to Louis XV's mother, Marie Adelaide of Savoy. When the king saw the portrait of his bride-to-be, he was over the moon, saying, she is the loveliest of them all. The formal marriage proposal was made on April 2nd, 1725. Prior to the wedding, a medical examination was done of Maria, ruling out diseases like epilepsy. Reports about her period and her ability to have children were also reported as favorable. On August 15th, 1725, the marriage between Louis XV and Maria Lezinska took place via a proxy wedding service. Maria's name was then translated to the French Marie, and her Polish last name was difficult for French nobles to say correctly. On her way to France, Marie was accompanied by seven ladies-in-waiting, two maids of honor, and various pages and other staff. She was not given the usual grand welcome of a future queen of France, but she was seen handing out gifts on the way to her wedding and made a good first impression with the French common people. Louis and Marie met for the first time in person on the eve of their wedding on September 4th, 1725. Marie was 22 and Louis was just 15. As queen consort, Marie never had any major political influence, and she focused her time on humanitarian efforts. She would give money to the poor, food, supported hospitals and orphanages, and even made clothing for the less fortunate. She was not popular at court right away due to her family's status as a deposed royal family, but Marie eventually earned the court's respect after following the many rules and traditions of the French court. Louis XV was proud of his new wife and was said to have had a true passion for her. He even resisted taking a mistress when his wife first became pregnant. On August 14, 1727, almost two years since their marriage, Marie gave birth to twin little girls named Princess Louise Elizabeth and Princess Anne Henriette. Louis XV was delighted with the birth of his daughters, saying he had not just become a father, he had become a father of two. Following the birth of the twin princesses, Marie and Louis would have eight more children. Marie Louise, born in July 1728, Louis, born on September 4, 1729, on his parents' four-year wedding anniversary, Philippe Louis, born August 1730, Marie Adelaide, born March 1732, Victoire Louise, born in May 1733, Sophie Philippine, born July 1734, Marie Therese, born May 1736, and Louise Marie, born July 1737. Of her ten children, only seven would survive into adulthood. In letters towards her children, Marie is shown to have been a very affectionate mother and was known to hug and kiss her many children. She supervised their education and wrote letters to her younger daughters while they were being educated outside of Versailles. When her children were having problems, Marie consoled them and nursed them herself when they were feeling sick. The birth of Louise Marie in 1737 nearly ended the life of the queen and doctors advised Marie to no longer become pregnant. Due to this, she refused to share a bed with her husband any longer. 
Starting in 1733, Louis XV would go on to have numerous mistresses, such as Madame de Pompadour, perhaps his most famous, as well as father many illegitimate children. There was a role in the French court for the king's official mistress, and Marie was not fond of some of the women chosen for this position. One, Marie Anne, she disliked because she found her insolent. With Madame de Pompadour, Marie had a friendly relationship, as Pompadour treated Marie kindly and with respect. When the time came in 1746 for Marie's son, Louis, to remarry after the death of his first wife, Maria Theresa Raffaella, who died in childbirth, Marie opposed the candidate for the second marriage. Duchess Marie Joseph of Saxony, since Marie Joseph's father, King Augustus III of Poland, was a rival to Marie's own father, Stanislas I of Poland, but tensions were eased when Marie Joseph revealed that she admired Stanislas. On June 24, 1768, after 42 years of service as the longest serving Queen of France, Marie Lezinska died at the age of 65 at the Palace of Versailles, one day after her birthday. Her son, Louis, would die in 1765, aged 36, and therefore would never become king. Her father, Stanislas, would outlive his daughter and would die in 1776, aged 88. Her grandson would become King Louis XVI of France after the death of Louis XV in 1774, aged 65. After many years of being overshadowed by her husband and his numerous affairs, Marie's story deserves to be remembered just as much as theirs. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to Sweet History Tea, a channel full of random facts and lots of sparkles. Comment your thoughts down below and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss it when I upload a new video. If you would like to support my channel, please consider joining my Patreon or my membership program. It is not expected, but it is always appreciated. If you would like to chat with other members of my community, join my Discord, and please follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much again for watching, and until next time. It's the part where myself fell missing Now I got a lot to learn